Welcome to lecture number three. In lectures one and two, we reviewed the origins of privacy and learned of the touchstone underlying any privacy claim, whether there exists a reasonable expectation of privacy. Today's lecture focuses on the development of a claim for invasion of privacy under the common law. Not all states recognize a common law right of action for invasion of privacy. Many states have adopted Section 652 of the Restatement of Torts. Some states have codified common law privacy claims. In Utah, there are four different types of privacy claims that have been recognized under the common law. They are, number one, intrusion upon seclusion or solitude. Two, casting someone in a false light. Three, misappropriation of name or likeness. And four, public disclosure of private facts. Let's review each of these torts. First, the tort of intrusion upon seclusion. There are four elements to this tort. First, there must be an intentional intrusion. One cannot negligently invade someone's privacy. Second, the intrusion may be physical or otherwise. Thus, one can satisfy this element by use of a telephoto lens or an eavesdropping device. Third, the intrusion must be into the solitude or intrusion of private affairs of another. The key inquiry is whether the person has a reasonable expectation of solitude or seclusion. And finally, the intrusion must be highly offensive to a reasonable person. This is an objective standard, the so-called reasonable man. Let's look at some examples of a valid claim for intrusion upon seclusion. For example, eavesdropping on a private conversation by means of wiretapping or microphones or hidden recording devices where the participants had a reasonable expectation of privacy. Using a telephoto camera lens to peer into the bedroom of a home making unwanted and persistent telephone calls to someone's home late at night, or invasion of a person's home. These examples may also constitute crimes, such as stalking, cyberbullying, or trespass. California has determined the common law tort did not provide enough protection to celebrities and has adopted a very aggressive anti-paparazzi law. The California law prevents actual or constructive trespass with intent to capture any visual image or sound for commercial purposes of a person engaging in, quote, familial activity, end of quote. Unlike the common law tort, the forbidden activity need not be highly offensive, but merely offensive. The law was amended in 2011 to also make it a crime to willfully follow a vehicle too closely or break traffic laws in pursuit of a vehicle for purpose of capturing a visual image for commercial purposes. The penalty for violation is one year imprisonment and a $5,000 fine. A paparazzi was recently charged for chasing Justin Bieber on a California freeway. The common law tort of false light is related to defamation, but can be based on truthful facts. The elements of this tort are, one, giving publicity to a matter concerning another, which places that person in a false light, which, two, is highly offensive to a reasonable person, and three, the person knows that the publicity would result in the false light. An example of this tort would be where a newspaper publishes a story casting an individual in a false light. The facts may be true, but the context or juxtaposition of facts creates a false impression. For example, falsely portraying someone as a coward, as a drunkard, or as responsible for someone's death. A well-known example was Richard Jewell, a security guard at the Olympic Centennial Park in Atlanta, Georgia. Midway through the Olympic Games, Jewell discovered a pipe bomb on the park grounds and alerted police and helped evacuate the park before the bomb exploded, saving many lives. Unfortunately, he was wrongfully suspected 
later exonerated, but in the meantime was the subject of a series of media reports casting him in an unfavorable and false light. The third common law tort recognized in Utah and most states is the tort of misappropriation of name or likeness. This tort is based on the concept that every person has a so-called right of publicity and the right to control the use of one's name, image, or distinguishing characteristics, such as a voice. Utah has enacted a statute that also makes this tort a crime. It is this tort which protects celebrities and other well-known persons from having their name or image exploited by others. There are two elements to this cause of action. Liability attaches when one appropriates the name, likeness, or characteristic of another and does so for one's own use or benefit, usually commercially. An example of this tort would include using Michael Jordan's name or image implying an endorsement of a product or using someone's image in a commercial context without permission. The final common law privacy tort is the public disclosure of private facts. This tort has three elements. One, giving publicity to, private, to the private facts or the life of another. Thus, if the information is publicly known, there is no cause of action, no matter how private or embarrassing. Two, the information must be highly offensive to a reasonable person. Something that is simply embarrassing will not satisfy this element. And finally, the information disclosed must not be of legitimate concern to the public. This is what protects TV talk shows like Dr. Phil and various tabloid celebrity stories. Some examples of this tort could be disclosing someone is HIV positive, revealing that someone was the subject of sexual abuse as a child, or disclosing someone's sexual orientation. Review the following images and come to class prepared to discuss what contextual facts would need to exist to support a valid claim for invasion of privacy and what possible tort could be implicated.